This video is proudly sponsored by Toadfish Outfitters. Good morning, Poppy. Hey, you wanna go outside? Hey you, you be good today. Don't eat any lizards, please. I don't want them thrown up in the house. You got that? Hey, you got that? Thank you. Here you go. Yeah, it's a little cool out there, isn't it? Not nice like the house. Oh, hi, Lily. Hey, come here. Oh, she mad at me. Lily's our indoor cat. She's not allowed to go outside. Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to another high adventure video. I don't know why, but I am particularly excited to go fishing today. Maybe because the crappie are starting to move up and spawn. The fish are starting to kind of wake up. It's springtime. Officially, actually, yesterday was the first day of spring. And everything's just kind of moving and grooving, I feel like. Now, I had a few people worried in the last video when I was hooking the boat up to the truck that I didn't use a pin for the ball hitch. I actually have this big screw that I put through there with a bolt. So fear not, it will not pop off the trailer. Why you do that is because this can actually, like if you go over a, a very nasty bump, this thing, whole thing, the latch could actually pop up from the ball hitch and then your whole boat comes off. You know, when you're flying down the road at a comfortable 65, make for a good nightmare. There we go. Filming equipment, check. Boat's fully charged. What in the world? I don't know why this is. Oh, 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 oh mother goose. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I just took chunks of skin out of my knuckles. Oh. Ouch. And we're off! Haha, <laughs> Uncrustables for the win. Peanut butter and jelly flavored. First thing we gotta do before I hit the lake is go bug Ethan over at Lake World Bait Shop. Come hit me up with some bait. I think I found one of variety this time. Gobi. Oh, I made it. Good morning, man. How are you doing? What's going on? Dude, just living the dream. Coming in to steal some of your bait. I'm going to probably take at least a couple dozen. Do you have large shiners again? Uh, I don't have any large. I've got uh, some mediums and I got toughies. You know, I'll probably just do mediums then. Okay. Yeah, I'll take like, I'll take like, let's do like three dozen of those okay. then, if I could from you. Okay, do you want to do about half and half? I could pick some of the bigger ones. If you want. Um, yeah, if I get the like kind of the bigger, the better, okay. personally. Thanks, man. Yeah. You'll throw another dozen in there if you would, please. Okay. And just another a mixture. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh huh. Y'all yeah. heading out today? Yeah, we're going out to the lake. Nice. What y'all going after? Uh, regular on the fishing dock there, the little one. Yep. Are you guys uh, going? Are you guys uh, uh, bank fishing? Yep. Nice, nice. Where are you I'm gonna go over to Drear, Drear Island, see what's up over there. I had a buddy out there uh, on Friday, and they're catching some striper around the island now. Okay. So yeah, they're catching them up on the rocks of the dam now too. I saw a boat out there this morning. I yeah. thought, you know, that's where, that's where they're at. Too. Okay, yeah. That's where they're at. Oh, no kidding. We're gonna try it off the pier over here. I caught, I caught a uh, three-pound largemouth off the rocks of the day, right up here at the dam. No kidding, man. I don't know why I'm driving all the way over to Drear. You guys are smashing them out of the dam. We're gonna try it this morning. I, I saw a guy catch three the other morning when I was largemouth. No, his were all stripers, about 20 inches. No kidding. Well, good luck to you. Always enjoy stopping at Lake World. Say hi to Ethan. He always has a little bit of information for me. And uh, you always usually meet somebody new there every time you go. It's always fun. Kind of get the lowdown of what's going on on the lake. Here we go. Lock her up. Here we are. Welcome home for the next 24 hours. I love these boat camping trips. 
This is a 16 foot Express DBX John boot. Boop, 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 boop. Still hooked up apparently. There we go. So about this time last year, that little bridge right back there, we came and slayed a crappie. Now I've got that bridge and two other bridges we could fish around this area. Love, love, love this time of year. Everything's starting to wake up. Everything's starting to get active. Fish are starting to move around. You're not just limited to, you know, one or two types of fish that are really active. Like everything's waking up. So it's just, just a good, good time of year to be out and about. Long run complete. <laughs> First fishing spot. Oh man. Get this guy turned on up here. All right, we got this little double rig on here, which we're just gonna drop down to the bottom, reel up a little bit, see if we can't find some fish around these pilings here. 11 feet, water's back up to full pool. Had a bunch of rain last week and that really helped, but we haven't had rain for about mm, three days now. So the water clarity looks, looks good, which is good. Don't want it all muddy and murky. Well, oh, that was a little peck right there. There's one, See, yeah, that's a brim right there. That's a brim, the way that's biting. The crappie will just kind of like boom and load on. There he is, see that, holy cow. <laughs> Look at that big old brim, nailed the bottom one. That's an aggressive little, I think it's a pumpkin seed right there. Oh, and he's peeing all over me, get out of here. Okay, that's his self-defense mechanism. <laughs> there you go, those guys are feisty. That's good catfish bait right there, but we picked up some catfish bait at the bait shop, so we'll toss him back for now. Look at all the bird's nests. There are bird's nests up there, and like those mud daubers or whatever, those type of bees that make those little mud homes all up under these bridges. Whew. Just looking for that load on. See, there's a bite. Got him. I think this is another brim though. Ooh, feisty little brim. Actually, not a bad size one. Look at this guy. Oh, now that's a big one. We might keep that one right there. Look at this fatty. That's a mini pancake bluegill right there. I think we're gonna put him on a stringer. I'll eat that. Bluegill are good eating. They're good eating. Hey, not a bad way to start the day. First spot, pulling up on some fish. We'll put him on a stringer. These little guys offer a pretty decent fight, actually. When you get the bigger ones, look at that. We stringered up first thing this morning, that's awesome. I'll take that. All right, y'all, brief break in the action to tell you about today's sponsor, Toadfish Outfitters. Now, the people at Toadfish Outfitters are dedicated to keeping the coastal waterways clean, and one of the ways they do that is by replanting oyster beds. Now, a lot of y'all might know this, oysters actually act as a natural filter for the ocean water. They have replanted over 210,000 square feet of oyster beds. Now what they have sent me today is their travel rod and 2500 carbon spinning reel. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was a little hesitant at first because rods that come in multiple pieces, eh, I tend to stay away from them. But I decided to give this a try and let me tell you what, this thing blew me away. It comes in this super heavy duty tube. This isn't some little PVC pipe. This thing can take a beating. It's heavy duty, it's legit, it's going to keep your rod safe. They also wrap your rod in velvety goodness. Look at this, there are actually chambers here for wrapping each individual rod piece. Now the rod comes in three pieces. However, they gave you two additional lengths of rod so you can switch up the style of rod you want to use. So for me, I've been fishing with the medium slash medium heavy setup, but they also have a medium heavy setup just straight up. And there are actually four different ways that you could configure this. There's also another tip for this setup as well. You can mix and match them however you like. It's pretty sweet. They don't just give you, hey, here's standard, you know, one size fits all kind of a thing. You get to customize it basically. Now, I've taken this out already. In fact, I used it in my last video and the first fish I caught on this combo was about an eight pound catfish. Handled it just fine. Oh, there's something right there on the jig. Wait, wait. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's totally a catfish, I guarantee you that. Good fight, 
Good way to get the skunk out of the boat. Eight pound catfish, no problem. Now what I was most impressed with uh, is later in the same day, I hooked about a 17 pound carp. He just, I mean, it just hit and just the rod just doubled. Good grief. I mean, you never know what's swimming around out there. And the rod had no problem fighting and bringing that bad boy in. Now I have this paired with their Toadfish 2500 carbon spinning reel, carbon rotor, carbon handle, and a sealed carbon drag. Now I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I own nine different spinning rod and reel setups. I'm a spin cast kind of guy. I own zero bait casters. This reel right here is probably top two, perhaps even the best spinning reel that I own. This thing is super smooth. I have it equipped with eight pound test line. This thing casts like a dream. It reels like a dream. I'm blown away by this setup. Now y'all know I don't advertise a lot of products on my channel and I'm super picky about what I do advertise. I have no problem recommending this to you guys and saying go for it, do yourself a favor. Y'all go check out the links in the description below to this bad boy. They have a lot of cool stuff over at the Toadfish website, but go get yourself hooked up with this rod and reel setup. I promise you, you're not gonna be disappointed. Right in this channel right here, gets down to about 12 feet deep. Work this channel, we got, look at it, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, really, really four pilings in the middle, but there are pilings right on the outside as well, so plenty of structure to work. There's a bite. See that? Oh man, he just nailed it. There's another one. It's another nice one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> look at, oh, he got the top one. Flip him aboard. Look at that, another tubby. Oh wait, this is a big, wait, no, that's the same one. Look at that. Now this one looks, oh, this one's peeing on me too. Stop it. I see, I see how you're getting your revenge. You got the top jig there. Look at that. We'll put him on the stringer too. I'm not picky, man. It's just hard to get these at a decent size. I don't typically eat brim. It's just usually difficult to get them at a good size, but we're, we're plugging some little porkers right now. These will go in the frying pan hole right here. Fill in the stringer early. Now check this out. I think these are two totally different types of brim. This looks like more of a pumpkin seed, and this looks like a true bluegill right here to me. You can see there's definitely a difference there. Definitely a difference. But it's two nice sized ones. There he is right there. Look at that. Good grief. They're just stacked up in here. Just stacked up. Now this is a little bit better one. We might throw him on a stringer as well. Look at that. There we go. That's a little fatter. Just, I mean, just like a quarter of an inch makes a big difference. Hammered that red and white. Putting some brim on the strainer today. Good grief, I wasn't expecting this. Nice. Nice looking little stringer there. We're getting it. Just dropping it right between these pilings here. Dropping it down, giving it about 10 feet. Just right off the bottom. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish right there. What is this? What is this? There's gotta be another brim. See the way that guy's running around? That's a nice one. Oh, this is a piggy. That's a piggy one. <laughs> oh, that's a shell cracker. Look at this, guys. That's a shell cracker. Big, fat, whoop, shell cracker. Before I hit the bridge on my trolling motor, look at that. That's a stud right there. That's just about as good as getting a big old crappy right there. Yes. Working that bridge piling, man. Working that bridge piling. We score a big tubby shell. Nice. Nice, you just never know what's hanging out down there. Well, this is fun. Came for the crappy nailing the brim. Here you go. How about this for Colin right here? Get rid of this guy for this guy, heck yeah. You go free. Not a bad first stop. I'm glad we stopped here to start the day. Oh man, what a variety. What a variety. All right, I think that's gonna conclude our day right here. Check that out. Not, not a bad first spot, that's for sure. <laughs> we got three different species or variety of brim on there. And uh, 
I think that's gonna be lunch right there. Awesome. Let's go and get fired up the big motor. Let's go look for some bigger fish. Spot number two. We're in about 30 feet of water. We're gonna drop some live shiners down. In fact, I think I'm marking some stuff on the graph down there, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just hooking these guys right through the lips and out one of the nostrils. And I'm giving them like, I don't know, three or four feet of line between the hook and uh, my little Carolina rig set up there. Gives them some play in the water so they can kind of swim around, wiggle around a little bit, act as natural as possible. Oh, this one on this one, this one. Ready. Right Got him on this one. Live shiner. Come on. Woohoo! Feels like a solid fish. This is on that toad fish rod and reel setup. This is this is a three-piece, and so far it's handling this fish not a problem. Oh yeah. Come on. There's a nice striper right there. Where's my net? Oh, here it is. That's not a bad fish. That's not a bad fish. I don't know if she'll go 21. Nice. All right. Man, she just absolutely devoured. Oh my goodness, like choked it. Just choked it. Got to be 21 inches this time of year. I'm pretty sure that's only about 18, 19. Good grief. Like that. You know, I'm not going to be able to get that out. That's what we're going to do. I don't want to be digging around in her, in her mouth there. We'll measure it up. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go 19. That'd be my guess. Let's see here. Oh man, not bad. A little over 19. Not a bad guess. There we go, first striper of the day. Gotta be a little bigger than that. That's not shabby. Not shabby, there she goes. That's kind of shallow water too. Whoa, 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 look at that. Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh no, did he get off? Oh man, how do you eat that like that and then not get hooked up? Oh my goodness, you guys see that? How, and he's still on there. What? You guys, he's still alive. Oh my word. How do you have a take like that? Oh, and, and not get hooked up cheeky thing. Oh my gosh, this one, this one right here, right here. We got, we got him. Yeah, we got him, we got him. I thought I was hitting the bottom and uh, and uh, I, I didn't even, I was like, oh shoot, it snagged, but nope. Oh my gosh, it's a big large mouth. It is a big, big large mouth. Check this out. Oh my heavens. This thing, this thing is a tank. This thing is a tank. Check this out. Oh. oh my word. Look at this. Look at this big large mouth. Oh my word. Holy cow. Look at that. That. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, guys. A big large mouth trolling the shiner there you go right in the top of the lip not exactly uh what i'm after but that's a fun catch <laughs> wasn't expecting that out here in about 18 feet of water i thought it was dragging the bottom that's why uh i kind of reacted slowly i thought oh shoot and then all of a sudden that it just started to shake hey <laughs> we just plugged a big old large mouth good grief let's see how long this thing is 20 inches, 20 inches long. Gotta weigh them up. 3.61, 3.61, almost four pounds. So not quite the biggest large mouth that I've ever caught, but uh, definitely probably the second biggest. So they get big in this lake. They'll get like 10 pounders in here. So <laughs> there's a bonus fish right there. We'll let this one go. That was an awesome, awesome catch though. There she goes. There you go, baby. There you go. 
You're gonna be all right. No. Nice. Man, what a variety this morning so far. This is awesome. I have decided it is time for a little lunch. So I've gone ahead and anchored up the trolling motor, killed a couple of our brim. I was just gonna cook them whole, but then I'm looking at it going, dang, I could just, just eat it boneless. I like the sound of that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Right there. Let's cut that rib cage out. Get rid of that. There'll be a happy catfish or two down there. Left the nice little shell cracker steak. Go along good with the bluegill. I'm gonna start with the bluegill first, I think. Put a little kicking chicken on these guys. Crack a little salt on there as well. Woo! Look at that. You kidding me? That seasoning has a really delectable smell to it. Mm. Oh, boat passed. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm kind of regretting culling those other two brim because this is delicious. Maybe I should have held on to those. Shell cracker time. Those little fish are so flaky and good. Man, this is delicious. A little fresh fish lunch right out on the boat. Hmm. Trying to think of what, how we should change up our strategy here. Here's what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen. I think, there he is. I think we're gonna beat the banks with a crankbait for a little bit. After catching that large mouth, I'm wondering if there's some, some of the other bass moving up into the shallows, not just our striped friends. There we go. Let's see if we can plug anything with that for a little bit this afternoon. Is that a fish? Or did I just hook a big stick? I hooked a big stick, dang it, oh man. Look, he's running to the side. Oh, I got excited. That's a weighty little stick right there. Hey, hop off, no free rides here. Come on. Good grief, that is a solid branch. Get out of here. Well y'all, it has been a slow day. Um, I've actually pulled up to the bridge I was gonna spend the night at and uh, just thought I'd tool around here. I have fished like both sides of the bridge. I've been beating like the banks with crankbaits been working some of the docks but just have not been getting anything when i pulled up here though i was talking to a gentleman on the boat and he said he said the, the crappy weren't holding to the bridges he said he's catching them out here like in the middle he said there's chasing bait i just watched him pull up two fish and he's just trolling around out here i don't know we'll see we'll see hopefully our luck changes because ever since that large mouth that was like like three hours ago and i just haven't had anything There's one right there, right there. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Yes, we finally got one. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Oh man, that took forever. Feels like a solid fish. Feels like a solid fish. Oh, it's a little striper. Come on. Come on. Get out of here. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. That ain't what I want. Man. I mean, okay. It's a pretty looking fish. But he's about, oh, 14 inches too small. Get out of here. Man, I thought we finally had a crappy. Oh, there's one right there. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's this gotta be a striper right here. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think we got a striper here. Come here, you. That feels like a solid fish, guys. Well, we're finally clued in on the depth we need to be at. Uh, you know, I caught uh, I caught a small striper, and then I just caught this guy. So I think if it just had to get the right depth. So it's gonna say it. Oh, some big striper. Oh. I don't mind the striper if he's an eating size. Yeah, yep, yeah, bleed him out. Come on. Feels like a be a decent one. Oh yeah, that might be a keeper. Check this out, guys. Come here, you. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Yes! Alright. That might be right there. I'd take that. Look at that. Just choke down that little crappy jig right there. Now here's the moment of truth. Does he go 21? They gotta be 21 inches this time of year to keep. Oh yeah, he's 21. He's over 22. Over 22. Woohoo! I'm gonna eat that. That's gonna taste good. Yep, yep. We got supper. Sweet. We're gonna get this guy on a stringer. Check, check this out. Oh, I gotta see. Oh my lord, have mercy. Oh my lord. Wait, hold on. I gotta, I gotta see. Those are some big eyed fish down there. Whoo. I'm retired, but. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you're out here. You can come out whenever you want then. I, I, bought, I bought a place in a lake off Bogator Road. Oh, okay. Uh, 1990. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I got a big dock on it now. Oh. Uh. Nice. Yeah. So you just so you just basically pull up to your dock then? Is that what you? Oh, nice. Yeah. Man, this old boat. This is an old boat. But I I don't care what I do to it because it's an old boat. That's right. I That's right. Boat. I bought it for five thousand dollars twenty years ago. It was a wow. Boat. Wow. And it runs good. It's got an old freaking motor, but it's fly. All right. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. All right. So I've been having a really tough afternoon. That gentleman right there, Mr. Paul, uh, I kid you not, I've seen him pull up like probably 13, 14 crappy right in front of me, just just moving around the area. And so he gave me some uh, tips and tricks. Really helped me start to kind of dial this in and try to get some of these fish that he was getting. Fortunately, we got one. Got the uh, striper right there on the stringer now. Nice 22 incher. It's a really nice fish really nice fish that is going to be supper all right i've waited probably a little longer than i should have but dang it i wanted to catch a crappy of course we didn't <laughs> so we better go get tied up to the bridge now though head over to these pilings here get all set up they've got these little uh these little rings for boats right here for just this purpose we are tied up. We ain't going nowhere. And then what I've got actually is I've got this buoy. I only have one because they only had one at the store. Just kind of Jimmy rigging this at this point. Will that keep it away? Oh yeah, that actually will. There you go, all right, perfect. Just like that, just how we planned it. <laughs> Set the extra right there. And that'll keep the boat, see that? Keep the boat from banging against this. It is a big aluminum boat, so I mean, we can do some clanging around, but I don't know, just keep a little extra wear and tear off the boat if we can help it. All right, it's time to get camp set up. It is late. Get our little night lav lights on. Check this out. If you guys haven't seen this in the past, I installed these when I bought the boat. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? I'm really proud of that if you guys haven't been able to tell. <laughs> right on the bow. We do sit in a no wake, so I'm not terribly worried about people rolling through here very fast, but famous last words, right? All right. Now, that was the hard part. Getting the tent set up. Now we can start to shuffle all our stuff around and spread it out a little bit. Like bring the heater in 
Okay, are you guys ready for the most exciting part of this whole camping trip? I am literally psyched out of my mind for this. I don't know why, but here it goes. On button, Christmas lights! <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Is that not baller or what? We are lit up now, and it actually also provides some extra light from inside. So I don't have to have the big lights running all the time. I've just got these lights on. Actually, these might be our little like night light tonight. It's pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Do you need Christmas lights on your tent while you're out boat tent camping? No, you don't. No, you don't. But is it really cool? Heck yeah. If you guys are new to the channel, um, you're discovering now that we pretty much go extra on everything here at High Adventure Videos. Why, you might ask? I don't know. I guess I always kind of have been over the top. Life's too short to be boring and bland and dull and just doing the same old thing everybody else does. So why tent camp when you could tent camp on a boat? And why tent camp on a boat with regular lights when you can have Christmas lights on your tent, on your boat, while you camp? Welcome to High Adventure Videos, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, anyway, this is very excessive. I, I, uh, fully, fully aware. Time to get the bedding situation situated. Oh, I'm heading for my bedding where I'll bed down, sleep me tight. Pillow. I need a travel size pillow. This pillow, like, I don't need this large of a pillow. I need to downsize that. Save space. Basically just save space, I guess that's about it. But I don't need this moss of pillow. Probably don't even need a pillow at all. I just ball up a shirt and sleep on it. Our fresh little Walmart sheet, freshly laundered. Home sweet home. And as always, take your shoes off before entering. There we go. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have seen my setup, but have you seen my setup with Christmas lights? <laughs> no, seriously, here you go. We are all hunkered down pretty much for the night. Got all my stuff. I'm actually charging some GoPro batteries right now. Got all my filming stuff, my backpack, my clothes right over there. And yeah, here we sit. Uh, just, how do the kids say it? Vibin'. Is that what's in these days? Are we vibing? Is this vibing? Okay, anyway, let's head out and vibe out on the deck. I'm going to start the bleeding out process of our striper. And we're gonna, actually, I think the next thing we're gonna do is get that catfish line out. Let's do that next, actually. So I've mentioned in the past that I want to get a doorway and I'm going to uh, put in the back of the tent. And this is why, because the only way to get to the bow of the boat, I need like my little cutting knife. This is the only way I can get to the bow of the boat. It's by going along this ledge. Now, fortunately, I actually have the bridge here to kind of steady myself on. Uh, but you just gotta go carefully or else you're in the drink. This is why I try to keep everything or grab everything that I want, keep it at the bow of the boat so I don't have to do this. And once we get Ooh, once we get a doorway cut in, won't have to do that anymore. Got a nice bit of herring here from the bait shop. Kind of butterfly them out so all the juices are out. There we go. Let's see if that gets us a juicy catfish. I think we're just going to throw them right out here. Not going to even worry about it. Not even gonna worry about like throwing it way out or anything. Put a bell on the end. There we go. Loosen the drag a bit. There we go. Tighten the line. Drop them in. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. It's starting to get warmer. There's catfish to move around. Striper would eat that too. Dead herring, heck yeah, striper would eat that. You never know. It's the fun thing about fishing around here. All right, our striper is bled out. So it is time to get to clean it. Huh, this is a female. I thought they spawned already. I guess not. 
Let's take all that out so it doesn't get on the deck of the boat. Just toss it over right there. And we just cut up a little bit off of the meat. So we leave that bloodline on the skin. Hopefully. Or a lot of it. Yeah, that's working out. That's working out. There, so you can see all that red there. We still got a little bit there, but that's not... No big deal, no big deal. Leave a lot of that bloodline. Boom, there's one side. I say boom a lot. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, boom, hey, boom. I might try some. Wait, is this any good still? Yeah. Samojo citrus blend on our fish. You know, maybe we'll pair that with that spicy kick and chicken. Oh, there we go. That's plenty hot. There we go. Big hearty piece of meat right there. Drop right in. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting a bite on the catfish rod, guys. Just got a big old bite on the catfish rod. Oh, I think he's still on there. I think he's still on there. That was a big old hit. Holy cow, that wasn't me bumping it. He's still down there. He's still down there. He fell off. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. He's taking it. Come on. Oh, are you serious? I missed it? What? No way. Oh, come on. <laughs> Guys, I just totally, like, oh my word, he took that. That's a good sign, though. That's a good sign. That was a big hit. That might have been a striper. It, it very well could have been. That was a really good hit. Like, like it ran with it when I was trying to get the bell off. There you guys go. Nice. Slightly blackened by accident. <laughs> striper. Hmm. I'm hungry though. Unlike the brim we had earlier, mm, striper, much more hearty, more steak-like. So I decided the fish wasn't enough. I always bring back up food. And tonight we have ramen. Little beef ramen stew. Yeah. Now we're talking. Starting to get a little cool out. Get a little cool out. A little soup will be just the ticket. All right. <laughs> Fresh ramen in tow. That's good right there. I like that. You know, we really crushed it in the fishing today as far as variety. Didn't get the crappy, but got largemouth, striper, bluegill, pumpkin seed, and shell cracker. Not bad at all. It might be one of the best variety days I've had. Definitely the best one this year. We just baited up the cat fishing rod with some fresh bait. I've got the small rod down with a little minnow on it and a jig. And it's sitting in probably about 12 feet of water under the bridge. Both rods have bells on them. Oh, there's a pipe. Holy cow, that's a catfishing rod. Dude, something just annihilated it and then quit. Holy cow. Good thing it was in the rod holder. I mean, that was like, what? Huh, well, we'll leave that down there. Oh. That's tasty. Oh, that's nice. Got the heater on. We are jumping in bed. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm camped out under this bridge and I've got traffic literally maybe 10 feet above my head. I'm glad this road doesn't seem to be too busy right now or else it'd be a very restless night. Haven't heard any cars for a few minutes now. I mean, there's going to be some traffic, but hopefully not a lot tonight. 
It was, there's a vehicle. Unless something smacks the catfishing rod again and the bell goes off, I guess I'll just see you guys in the morning. Guys, I was just getting ready to put the lights out. And I think we got a bite. Oh yeah, we're getting a bite right now. Holy cow. Oh, it's cold out here. I've got no shirt on. It's just getting ready to go to bed. Come on. Is he still on there? Yeah. Got him. We got one. <laughs> right before bedtime. Right before bedtime. How about that? Let's go. Some late night fishing. I'm guessing this is a catfish. I mean, I'm assuming so. Oh, it's chilly out here though. I have no shirt on. Well, what is this? Is this one of those? This might be one of those, what do they call those a weird catfish? We've got like the big head, not a, not a, not a, um, not a flat head. Not a, look at this, look at this thing. Oh my heavens. It's got like this massive head on it. Oh, what do they call that? That's crazy. They call it like a, a brown, oh, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, that's a nice cat. That's a real nice cat right there. I think we're gonna throw this on a stringer. I love me some catfish. Plus I told my kids I'd bring them home a fish. Hook pops right out. Got the stringer up here. Ooh, ooh, chilly. Well, there you go. Just add to the variety of the day. Throw a catfish in there as well. Ooh, I need to get back in that heated tent, man. It's chilly out here. I guess we'll throw another piece of bait on though while we're at it. There you go, a little midnight catfish action. Sweet. All right, let's go to bed. Whew, I'm chilly. Let's get back in here where it's warm. Oh, guys. Oh, we're getting another bite. Get another bite. So there. Well, we missed him, guys. Back to bed we go. Oh, we're getting bit. Time to get back up. Oh yeah, he's on there. He's on there. Look at that. Look at that. He's just, he's straight on. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys. And it's still cold out. Bell off. Whew. Yeah, he's on. He's on. I'm getting back in the tent, though. I'm reeling this one in from the coziness of the tent. Oh, whew. it's chilly out there. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Reeling catfish in from the inside of the tent in the middle of the night. She doesn't want to come up, that's for sure. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on. Oh, I really probably not going to rebate this. I got to get some sleep. It's got to be like one o'clock in the morning. Come on. Where are you at? This is awesome though. Seriously, this is awesome. Catching catfish from our tent late at night under the bridge. Oh yeah, now, there's a channel catfish right there. Look at that kitty right there. Woo -hoo. Oh, I'll have to clear some deck space for this one. Now there's a true channel cat right there. Nice. Oh, man, that's probably close to 10 pounder right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's a good fish right there. That's a good catfish. Oh, hook pops out. Let's get her on the stringer with the other one. There we go, guys. 
Well, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. Back inside we go. Good night, world. Whew. It's cold out there. You know how I could tell it was morning time. Traffic started picking up. Oh, I don't know if it was the smartest decision to have the crappy lines out last night. I mean, the catfishing lines out. I ended up missing a couple other bites, but the bell kind of kept me up. I think I hear some neighbors pulled up under the bridge. Sounds like some crappy fishermen are here. Here we go. Whew. A little cool this morning. Looks like it's gonna be nice though. And there's nothing like a fresh cup of coffee when you're out fishing. Oh, guys, we're getting a bite on the catfish rod. Let's see if we can score a fish while we're cooking breakfast here. There he is. Got him. Got him. Ah. There he is. Yep, yeah, that's a cat. <laughs> a little morning catfish while we cook up some sausage and coffee. Oh, it's a little one. Look at this. This is a baby one. <laughs> that thing's small. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, man. Come here, little chubs. Here, here's your size comparison. Which one do we want? <laughs> that would actually be a good little... That'd go good with a little bit of breakfast in the morning, but we'll drop him back in. There you go, get out of here. Come back and see me in a few years. So we're taking some of the striper from last night, and I've got a bunch of sausage in the pan, and I've already cooked a bunch up, so there's a bunch of sausage grease in there. I'm just gonna put this right over the sausage. Yeah. A little sausage striper. Mmm. Maple sausage. Mm. There is the final product. Sausage striper. Looks pretty good to me. Getting plenty of protein this morning, that's for sure. <laughs> Tastes like fish cooked in sausage. Can't go wrong. All right, we have the boat transformed back into our fishing vessel. I think we're gonna work this piling a little bit and then, I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's just roll with it. <laughs> no plan is a good plan today. Guys, here we go, here we go, here we go. One's on here, live one. Got him. Got him, nice. On that live shiner. Feels like a solid fish. Come on. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, it's a little striper. You bum. You bum. I still have not caught a crappy yet. Good looking little fish. Probably about 11 inches long. Not what I want. There you go. I think that little uh, sartreuse head really kind of makes that minnow stand out from everything else out there. And it also allows them to sink down a little bit, keep them down. Ah, Krabby, where are you? Oh my word, there's one right there, look at that. 
He just loaded on. That's a fish, right? Oh, that is a fish. Oh my goodness. This is a good fish. Look at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh. We got a good one on, guys. This has to be a has to be a striper, right? Has to be a striper. He just loaded. Oh, we just broke it. Oh man, this thing has four pound test line on it. Oh, are you kidding? No, he just came off. He came off, hooks on and everything. Oh, that burns. That burns hard. Oh, ho, ho, that was a good fish. Oh, that was tough, guys. The weird thing was like, it just loaded on. When I've been getting my striper, like it's like, zzz, they run like the one I caught last night, like it took off. It was peeling drag. That just loaded on, which that's kind of what crappy do when they bite. Typically they just kind of load on it. I mean, the, the, the state record in, in South Carolina is five and a half pounds, like five and a half pound crappy or five and a quarter, five and a half, something like that. So, I mean, it makes you wonder like, did we just lose like a three or four pound crappy? I, I need some redemption because that burns. That, that, that hurts. It's been a while since I've lost a good fish like that. Oh. So this is what I'm looking at out here kind of in the middle. You see that right there? That's a fish. Might be a couple other fish right there. Oh, now there's something streaking up off the bottom. Could be a school of striper. I don't know. Anyway, but that's what I'm looking for right there. That's, that's those crappy hanging out chasing the bait. That might be bait right there. I don't know. It's kind of an odd look but uh what we'll do is when i see that is uh my rods are maybe about 25 feet or so behind the boat maybe 30 feet so when i see something like that show up i get real cautious because i'm thinking we're getting ready to drag some bait over that uh sign there which could be a crappy or a striper i'd take another eaten size striper like we caught yesterday that's for sure Got him. Here we go. Here we go. Finally. Come on. I just gotta get him in. Feels like a solid fish. Feels like a solid fish. Come on, please be a crappy this time. And yeah, it's crappy. It's crappy. It's crappy. Solid crappy right there. Yes! Yes! Look at that. Look at that guys. Right there. Got that little jig head. Finally, finally got one. Oh, that one's getting by. Oh, that one's right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa look at this. Oh, this has to be a striper right here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, this has to be a striper. Now, I got to be easy. This is four pound test. Oh, it just came off. It just came off. He just came off. Now, that's a, a striper run right there. You guys saw it just took off. I think that hook just popped out too. I don't think I actually lost. Uh, I, don't, I think I still have everything on. That's some action right there. That's what I've been waiting for. Yep, yep, still got the hook. When you're dealing with this small of hooks right here, you know, you get in a big striper, like you not quite need to gut hook it, but man, you need to get, get lucky on your hook set there. Cause it's just for whatever reason, when you get those small hooks and those big fish, it'd be easier for them to pop out. But this is a solid, solid little crappy right here not the biggest pig in the world but i'll tell you here let's see let's see how big is it i'll tell you guys exactly 13 and a half inches 13 and a half inch crappy they're chasing that bait fish that'll go on the stringer finally i need to get whatever that is that's pounding those lines i think we've lost a we've, we've already lost a couple nice fish this morning but there you go a little redemption so let's get this on stringer oh well y'all i think that's going to do it for this trip I've run out of live bait and these fish don't seem to prefer the grubs I've been throwing at them. I kind of hate to end the trip losing two nice fish like I did, but I don't know. I guess that means we have to come out and do it again. And we're going to do it again and again. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me the last 24 hours. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.